بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد The next hadith is the hadith of Uwais Qarni رحمه الله رضي الله عنه who was a great person who lived at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but never got a chance to meet the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had become Muslim in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but couldn't come to visit the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of his mother he would stay. Uh, where he lived which was in Yemen and he would stay there and take care of his mother and when asked that if he could leave his mother go, to go see the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam he was told that it's better for you to stay and take care of your mother so because of taking care of his mother he didn't get the chance to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but because of this sacrifice not being able to go see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he held a very high stage in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to the extent that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Umar radiallahu anhu يأتي عليكم أويس بن عامر مع أمداد أهل يمن من مراد ثم من قرن كان به برس فبرأ منه إلا موضع درهم له والدة هو بها بر لو أقسم على الله لأبر فإن استطعت أن يستغفر لك ففعل The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Umar radiallahu anhu that in your time uh, after I have passed away, a man will come to you, and his name will be Uwais ibn Amir. And he will be from the people of Yemen, Min Murad, from the tribe of Murad, Thumma Min Qarm, and then from the tribe of Qarm. So the Prophet ﷺ knew exactly everything about him. And the Prophet ﷺ even knew that Kanabihi Barasun, he had a skin disease. Uh, a skin disease that spreads all over the body and it leaves scars. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, that he will have this skin disease and then after getting this skin disease he will be cured from it except for one spot so one spot on his body it will be known that he has he had this disease and that one spot won't be cured so it will be a sign that he has that sickness uh, leprosy uh, in Arabic it's called baras and so the Prophet wasallam said his whole body will be cured from that sickness except for that one spot the Prophet wasallam said that he had a mother that he took care of and this person is so high in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he has to make a qasam, if he has to take an oath by the name of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it. Meaning if this, this person has to just say, uh, make a dua or say something by the name of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it for him because he's done such a great action. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Umar radiallahu an, if you have the opportunity to ask him, to make dua for you. If you find the opportunity to ask him, to ask Allah to forgive you, then do it. For verily his dua and his uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness is accepted. So in the time of Umar radiallahu an, this man came, Umar radiallahu an found him, uh, asked him to make dua for him, and then he was on his way. And remember this chapter is about the chapter of going to see the pious people, the chapter of going to see people who are known uh, for their religion, uh, for their piety, for their uh, knowledge. And so Umar radiallahu an would look out, he was the Khalifa, Amirul Mu'mineen, but he was still looking for this person named Uwais because he had a, he had a stage or a high stage in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, that year, this uh, from Hajj, Uwais, uh, Uwais Qarni rahimahullah was going to a different town. So Umar radiallahu told him, look, listen what I'll do. I'll write a letter for you to the governor of that town that you're going to. And give that letter to the governor, and the governor will take care of you. And Umar radiallahu anhu would write, you know, uh, Uwais Qarni is here, take care of him, you know, in regards to money and things of this nature. Uwais, ibn Qarni, uh, Uwais Qarni said, I don't need it. Anyway, the next year, a man from that same town where Uwais Qarni was living, he came. And so Umar radiallahu anhu asked him, how is Uwais? How is Uwais Qarni? And uh, he said that uh, Uwais is living in a very rundown house, he's not in a good condition. And so, uh, and he's actually left where he was living. So Umar radiallahu anh told him that this person, Uwais, is someone that has a very high sight, stage in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can say, ask him for dua, then go find him and ask him for dua. And so this person came to Uwais uh, and he found him. And he said, make dua for me, ask Allah to forgive me. Uh, and so he asked him, what do you know about me? And so Umar, he said, I met Umar and Umar told me this, uh, told me this about you. And so uh, after that, 
Uwais Qarni, he left from that town because he did not like that many people come to him and ask him for dua. He didn't like the, you know, the spotlight. He didn't like the fame and the honor. So he would actually stay away from the people. If people found out where he was, he would go into hiding. He was the Ummah's most wanted person, but he was hiding. He didn't want anybody to know where he was. So if you read the rest of his biography, it's actually very um, interesting how he would move from town to town to stay away from people coming to, get, coming to him. Because it was something that the Prophet ﷺ told Umar to do. Go find him and ask him to make dua for you because his duas are accepted. So this hadith is mentioned here in the chapter of going to visit uh, the pious people. And this is something that pious people do usually. They, they don't like the, the honor, the fame. They don't like the spotlight. One of my teachers in Egypt, uh, Sheikh Rafa'at Fozi, a great hadith scholar. And amongst th- scholars and students, he's very known. Uh, and so in his neighborhood, if, uh, is everybody in his neighborhood knows him. The masjid and everyone knows him because he's such a great scholar. But for Jum'ah Salah, he would pray Jum'ah Salah outside of that area. He'd go to a different masjid where nobody knows him. Uh, and so one time he prayed Jum'ah in, my, in the masjid that was in, where I was staying. And I saw him, I said, SubhanAllah, such a great scholar, but nobody in that masjid knew him. Because he was from a different town. And uh, I went and I met him and I asked him, well, why is he here? He said, I like to pray Jum'ah away from the people so I can actually you know, be involved. Uh, in, in, in my prayer to Allah because there's so many people I, I felt the same way in, in, in Fajr Salah in Ramadan when I prayed back there and Qadi Munir was up here it's different than praying up here so when you're away from people you actually connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what Awais Qarni rahimahullah that's what he did he liked staying away from the people even though they would come to him uh, to ask for du'as and uh, they would come to him to ask him to make istighfar for them. So this is the virtue of going out and meeting them. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ encouraged the Sahaba to do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and give us the tawfiq to act upon what has been said. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to guide us, to keep us and our families away from all harm. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.